In this video, I'm going to be discussing with you some of the key concepts that are important to know when discussing multiplication and really understanding what is happening when you are multiplying. So one of those key concepts is factors of a number. And so the factors are the two numbers that are being multiplied together. So here in this example, we have three times two equals six, which what that really means is it's three groups of two equals six. Three and two are our factors. They are being multiplied together. They are the numbers telling us that we have three groups and there are two in each group. They're kind of telling us what our multiplication looks like. And then six is our product. That is the result after joining, after multiplying those numbers. Six is the product. And the reason it's important to know what factors are is because it lets you know um, when you can determine the factors of a number, you can kind of then tell how you can use that number, what it can be used for, what it works well with. So here, we're going to practice finding the factors of 16 and the factors of 13. And we're going to notice something when we find their factors. Um, that we they're a certain kind of number. So we have the number 16 and we're trying to figure out what its factors are. That means what numbers worked together to give a product of 16. Okay, so automatically you know that if you have 16 objects, whether it's paper clips, candies, whatever it is, you can automatically know that you can make one group of 16. So one is a factor that makes 16, and 16 is a factor. And then I also know then that I could do 16 groups of one because one aspect of multiplication is the commutative property. So if I here, let's just use this smaller example of three groups of two. So here I have three groups and each one has two in them. I could also turn that array and look at it a different way and see two groups of three. So that's that commutative property of multiplication. But anyway, so I know that one group of 16 and 16 groups of 1 can work together to make a product of 16. But I wonder if anything else could. So one strategy we use is using multiples. Thinking about how if I repeatedly add a number over and over again, I might be able to get to a product of 16, and then that would be a factor. Um, if your fourth grader knows their multiplication facts and already knows the factors of a number, then they don't need to use this strategy. But if they don't, then this is a strategy they could use. So they've actually been doing this strategy since kindergarten. They called it skip counting, but it was actually working with multiples. So multiples are when you repeatedly add the same value over and over again. So for example here, if I want to know if 2 is a factor of 16, then I'm going to start with 2, and I'm going to say, okay, 2, that's one group of 2, but if I add 2, that's 4, now I have two groups of 2, and then I'm going to add two more, that's 6, that's three groups of 2. I've added 2 three times, now I'm 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. I landed right on 16, that means 2 is a factor of 16. So how many twos did I need? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I needed 8 groups of 2. So 2 groups of 8 and 8 groups of 2 work well with 16. All right, let's try 3. So here I have 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. All right, so I've passed 16. 16's in the middle here. Since I did not land right on 16, 3 does not work. It is not a factor of 16. All right, well, let me try 4. Let me try 4 over here. So I have 4, 8, 12, 16. I landed right on it. So that means 4 is a factor of 16. So I could have 4 is a factor, and how many fours did I need? I used four groups of four. So it's four groups of four. All right, so let me try five. And five, they're pretty used to counting by fives. Five, 10, 15, 20. Since I landed at 15 and 20 and not on 16, five does not work. Let me try six, so six, 12, 18. Again, I didn't land on 16, so six is not a factor of 16. And let me try 7. So 7, 14, 21. Again, not a factor because I didn't land right on 16. Um, I already know that 8 works because here I saw 8 groups of 2, 2 groups of 8. So I don't need to do 8 again. And then let me do 9. So 9, 18, 
Oh, I already passed 16, so that doesn't work. And counting by tens, 10, 20. That doesn't work either. So here I have my factors of 16. The factors are 1, 16, 2, 8, and 4. I don't need to say 4 again, okay? So 16 has 5 factors, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Or it has 3 factor pairs. These are called factor pairs. Okay, there are five factors, because four is a double, three factor pairs. Okay, so now that I know 16 works well with one and 16, two and eight, four and four, I know then then that is a composite number. So a composite number means it, can, it has many factor pairs. So as I see, I have three of them. Composite numbers have many factor pairs. You could try this with another number, like 20 you would see it has many factor pairs, 1 and 20, 5 and 4, 10 and 2. So you could use the same strategy of multiples. All right, now I want to move over to the number 13. So 13, you're going to see a different experience here. So I already know that with 13, I'm looking for how many groups of something equally makes 13. So if I try, I already know right away I could do one group of 13 or 13 groups of one, for sure. Now if I skip count by twos, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, it doesn't land on 13, so two doesn't work equally with 13, so that doesn't work. If I do multiples of three, three, six, nine, 12, 15, again, 3 didn't work, so I'm going to say no to 3. If I try 4s, 4, 8, 12, 16, 4 doesn't work. If I skip count by 5s, like I've been doing since kindergarten, 5, 10, 15, nope, 5 didn't work. Let me try 6, 6, 12, 18, nope, 6 isn't a factor. 7, 14, oh, I already skipped it, 7 doesn't work. 8, 16, Eight's not a factor. Nine, 18. Nine's not a factor. 10, if I count my tens like I've been doing, 10, 20, 10 doesn't work. What I'm realizing is that it has no other factors except one and three, one and 13, 13 and one. So 13 is called a prime number. That means the only factor pairs it has is one and itself. It has no other factor pairs. And you can try this with other numbers like 11 and 5. And there's a handful of prime numbers. Most numbers are composite, but there are quite a few prime numbers. And the reason that prime and composite numbers are important is, no, you don't walk around in life saying, oh, that's a prime number, that's a composite number. But you do buy um, or you do tend to want to use numbers that are composite more often because you know that you can be flexible with them. So composite numbers are flexible because you know that you have lots of ways to use them. I could have 16 chairs and I could put them into two groups of eight or I could put them into four groups of four, uh, four, groups of four. But if I have 13 chairs, I'm not gonna be able to make equal groups. I'm always gonna have unequal groups. So that's kind of how it affects you in real life. Um, so these are some of the concepts for multiplication that are kind of the foundation. Factors are the two numbers being multiplied together to make the product. Multiples are when you're repeatedly, we call that skip counting in younger grades, but it's a strategy you can use to find the factors of a product. And then once you determine if it can have many factor pairs or just that one, then that can determine if it's a prime or composite number. So use these strategies if you need them, multiples if you need to work on finding the factor pairs. Otherwise, if you know your multiplication facts, then you can use those to still determine if it's prime or composite.